Hey everybody, and welcome back to Uru. We are about to enter the fourth and final book inside the pillars here. And there's only really one thing left, but before we do that, I'm going to head back in here because I want to take another look at the entry in the proverb book for Kadesh Talisa. We didn't talk about that last time. We went to Teladon. We went to Greeson, and those two proverbs were definitely very applicable to their respective ages. And Kadesh says um, some words about, or Yisha, through this guy, says some words about um, that the way a man is when he is hidden is his true nature. And that we need to look deep, which we certainly did while we were there. All right, well, it's time to go on to Eater Gira and Eater Chemo. Although, we don't really know which of those we are going to link into here. So, uh, let's go ahead and check it out. It looks like a very desert-like place. <coughs> Ooh, and it's nighttime, even. Okay. Well, there's some kind of vent system here. There's steam coming out of those. Actually, a few of these. There's also steam that's just bubbling out of these little crevices here, so we must be on some kind of volcanic... Uh... Oh, wait a minute. There's something down there. Looks like there might be lava. Yep, there's definitely lava there. So we're, we're in a volcanic age. Very interesting. I wish we could see a little bit better. The uh, leaning panel showed daytime, and that is because there is a day-night cycle in this age. But uh, thankfully, I do know how to solve this. There are a few things you need to do, and they involve starting with closing these vents. It may not necessarily be super obvious when it's nighttime, but there's a little foot pedal here that you can use. And that covers the vents up. Because ultimately, what we're trying to do, let's see if I can get a good view of it from here. Um, there is a vent, I think it's this one, where there's a journey cloth above it. And the only way to get up there is for the steam to shoot us up all the way. I wouldn't recommend doing this in real life, by the way. I mean, steam can be really hot. It's not like in the movies and in these video games where you can just touch steam and everything's fine. Alright, so we just went back to where we started! Oh, and that's probably not going to be the last time that happens. <laughs> yeah, this age definitely involves some of the trickier platforming bits, but it's really not that bad. It's mainly this first part. Well, we got a, an appropriate red book here for uh, this age. The day-night cycle, I don't believe, is that long. It may be... An hour or so? I can't exactly remember. It looks like it's starting to brighten up already, though. One of the funny things I did when I first got this game was I actually... Uh, whoop, there we go. I actually took the uh, <clears throat> configuration files for the game, and you can actually set the speed at which the cycle happens. And I set it to really high, and then the sky was just like blazing through different colors like every second. It was really funny. All right, let's see what other steam vents there are. Kind of sharp plants here, too. <clears throat> okay, let's not fall. Okay, good. So there's this bridge over the lava area. Looks like there's a vent over there. That could be a little tricky to get to, but let's focus on the safe ones for now. You can hear a hissing sound. It looks like there's a waterfall over there. That looks like a more pleasant place to go to, honestly. Alright, here we go. Yeah, it looks like these are a little stronger now that we covered up a couple of them. But unfortunately, that's not high enough. We can elevate ourselves a little bit, but not much. Uh, please face. There we go. Yeah, 
It looks like this one allows you to go over these rocks if we were to shoot ourselves high enough, but uh, I don't really want to do that yet. I want to get to that journey cloth before anything else. I believe there's another ledge with a journey cloth over there. This one. I'm going to try to see if I can get to that one first. I should have probably done this earlier, but I didn't. So, let's give it a shot. Should I make this jump? I think I should. Yeah, there we go. I would never try that in real life, for the record. Now, i got to remember where exactly this ledge is. There it is, right there. I think there's a journey clock here. No, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Momentum. Momentum. And we got a green journey symbol, much like uh, the pillar for this place. No! <laughs> I thought walking off would be okay. I just like how you stop short of the lava and you're just like suspended in midair while you're using the Relto book. I mean, I guess it makes sense because you're probably, you're like the place that you're captured from when you're using the link. I can only imagine that that's probably a um, like a fixed spot so your body doesn't continue going down. But still, like in the context of this being a game, it looks really funny. Kind of like the, the jump animations. Ah, there you go. Whoa, we are getting some air time. Easy there. <laughs> Alright, I think that's all of them. Now I've heard it's possible to make this jump. I don't think I've ever done it, but let's see if I can do it. I did it! Nice! It's kind of a tricky one. Alright, so all of the vents should be closed with the exception of that one that's right above the area right below the area we need to go to. So let's give that a shot, see if it works. I think it's this way. <clears throat> and after we do this, we can focus on ge uh, getting on a little further here. Okay, I hear the hissing noise. There it is. Hopefully this is enough. The game kind of repositions you to... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Alright. And journey symbol. This age is really not the ideal age to be spending a night in. Just because it's kind of hard to see things, but... Thankfully I know where they are. Now, you might think that we can just close that one and then go to the other one and open it up in order to get across there, but you don't want to do that. The reason being because you will actually end up blowing all of the vents open, which is not good. So in actuality, you really want to open this one up first and then reverse the other one. <clears throat> I would show you the that happening, the blowing open thing, but I really don't want to do this all over again, to be honest. So what is the point of this age, I wonder? So far there isn't really any sign of civilization other than these gas vent mechanisms that allow you to open and close them. There was a mention of giving in the uh, proverb that was corresponding to this age. Oh wait, we can just go down here. Duh. It feels like this is a lot higher of a point to reach than those rock or the path behind the rocks is. <clears throat> I could just be imagining that, but it seems that way. You know what this planet reminds me of, or planet? Um, you know what this uh, age reminds me of? It reminds me of the planet. Um, what was it Kyle Two? I think from Star Wars Rogue Squadron. You guys remember the video game Rogue Squadron, don't you? 
He had a bunch of like missions that you could go through as an X-Wing pilot. I think mostly as Luke Skywalker, but there were a few exceptions. And there's this one called Assault on Kyle 2, which was like a moon uh, that was very rocky and canyony. It was fun. I really liked that game a lot. Yay, we made it. Alright, so we, we're done with that at least. So what's in here? We got to the waterfall. <clears throat> and there is a book here. Where does this go? To another age. Doesn't look like Dunny, so uh, I'm going to save that for a minute. It's over here. My voice is out tonight for some reason. I think because I just got back from running. There's a drop-off here with this waterfall, and you might think, oh, maybe there's a Relto page down there, but there's actually no point in going down there. It's just a dead end. I think this is another instance of an age in which um, there was originally some intention to have you go out all the way over there to that tower with all that stuff, but that never happened. I don't know if that dead-end path was originally meant to be sort of a gateway to other stuff. There's also a rock here with a link stone. I'm going to visit this here in a little while, but not yet, because we're going to probably spend an entire video just on that. So we'll wait on that for a little while. Behind the waterfall, we've got a little cave. Well, we really can't see much inside this cave. And it doesn't really look like we can go much further. We're going to have some more light if we're going to go in there. And yes, technically it is possible to go to where you need to go, but in order to do what you need to do in the next area, you actually do need to have light. The game will not allow you to proceed without it. Okay. <clears throat> well, I think it's time we head on to that other age. See what awaits us over there. This one also seems a little rocky, but it's not quite as uh, arid looking as the previous age. This one looks a little bit more stony, and a little bit more green. I can see some trees. Looks beautiful. There's even a fountain here. It definitely looks like a lot more in the way of man-made constructions than uh, the other age. <clears throat> I don't know what this is supposed to represent. I believe these are drawings that were made by the uh, Baro. By the way, I'll go ahead and lose the pretense here. The Baro are, the, are the, um, the creatures, the ones that we've been hearing. We haven't seen them, but we've been hearing them, and we've heard Yisha talk about them throughout the course of the, uh, the game. And they're represented usually by these, these drawings that show them all hunched over like this. I have to assume that this is a drawing of Garrison here, this looks like Teladon, from all indications, and maybe this is Kadish Talisa. I mean, the style of it looks like these are those trees, kind of, and this looks like it could be the vaults, with all the uh, things hanging there, suspending it. I don't really know what all of this is here, what this is all about. It's kind of faded away. And this, is that something in the cavern? I'm not really sure. Either way, it looks like the Barrow have been around, so... And there's a journey cloth here. The question is, is this going to be a part of the series we've been going through? It is. Okay, so this is journey cloth number three. So these are all, these two ages are in fact connected, so this does confirm what we were thinking earlier. I remember back when Uru Live was briefly a thing, there were a lot of people who came to this age and uh, had hide-and-seek parties here. They used a lot of these uh, wooded areas and trees and other things to hide behind. It was fun. 
Or at least it looked fun. I never got to really be a part of it. Alright, so this is where we came from, so let's just keep going. Oh, and we found the journey door. It's just right there. No jumping required. That's nice. Haven't had one of those since Teladon. We've also got a picture of something here. Looks like a winged headless creature and another headless creature and somebody else. I don't know what that means. And over here we've got a, another drawing of something else. And over here we've got more stuff. I don't know if all this stuff was meant to be things that you would... Uh-oh. It's raining! I guess it gets dark here, too. I don't know what this is supposed to be. Maybe this was, like, content that was supposed to be released at some other point, and it never did. Uh, I really can't tell what that is. Maybe we can look at it later. Yeah. Let's continue onward. Just check it out. And why am I... There you go. At least the lights come on here when it's all stormy like this. And the storms don't really last for too long anyway, so that's not so bad. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there's a journey cloth up here. Yep. Cool, alright. What do we have here? We got more borrow drawings. Kind of hard to tell what they are, but this one is very prominent. It shows a city or something with some, some gears underneath it. I haven't really seen anything like that. And then over here, we've got something else that we'll, we'll take a look at once the lightning hits again. It looks like a sphere with four other spheres and at cardinal direction points. Again, that doesn't really look like anything we've seen so far. Is it stopping? It looks like it's done. I think it's done. So yeah, that's pretty much about it here in this area. Doesn't really seem like there's much else. Alright, uh, let's take a look around further here. There's a statue? As well as a maintainer marker right there. Floating statue. And a link stone behind it. So, I don't know what this is supposed to be. Maybe this is supposed to be... It doesn't really look like Yisha, because it doesn't match the other drawings we've seen of her. It could be a Dunny King or something. <clears throat> okay, so let's check this out. <clears throat> Note to self, do not record right after you go running. Alright, so this appears to be the top of a roof. And it looks like this place is at least very similar to that area that we saw above in that balcony. I don't know if we can see it here. I think it's up there. or No, up there. That's where we were earlier. That was the balcony with that mural on it. I don't know if you can jump off this. No, you can't. I think there might be a bug that allows you to do this. I know there was a bug that involved jumping off that balcony and everyone was trying to do it so they can explore down here before the uh, two Dunny stuff came out. But, uh, yeah, we can't jump off this. But it's a pretty cool view. Alright, let's go back to Relto and head back to the age we were just in. I don't know if the game actually explicitly tells you, but... Uh, I'll go ahead and just say it here for, to avoid confusion. Eater Gira is the one that's the, that's arid, and Eater Chemo is the one that's a little bit more uh, green. All right, let's take a look around further. Where was the path? We had a path around here. I think the path goes this way. Just to make sure we didn't miss anything. We got a bunch of plants here that look like giant brains or something. I think most people call these the brain trees. 
Because that's kind of what they look like. And, ooh, we got fireflies. Hey, fireflies. Oh, we scared them off. Okay. Well, let's continue taking a look around. Any more interesting things to see? I don't think there are any more murals there. But down here... We've got these pear-shaped plants. And, as it turns out, a Relto page. A Relto page that's very tricky to get to. There's also a notebook up there. The page is on that ledge, and in order to get to it, you have to get on this rock. I would be very surprised if I got this on a first attempt. Okay. And then from the rock, you go like this. There we go! We actually made it! And this gives us some... I think this is a rug, if I'm not mistaken, for our, uh, our hut. Alright, before we go move on, let's uh, read this um, notebook up here. Actually, before we do that, we can take a look at these drawings, although this doesn't really tell us a whole lot. Let's see what the notebook has to say. Showmat Story The Story of Showmat, taken from Book 43C. We have yet to name it. Translation, Nick. First draft, at the age of 121, Showmat had resided in his palace of the kings for 20 years. Though the palace had taken 45 years to construct, and new additions had been added every year, Showmat was still not pleased with all that surrounded him. His palace was larger than any structure in the city, and the gardens of his palace were more beautiful than any other living plants that the people had ever known. But Showmat demanded more from those who created his home and his gardens. Showmat sent messengers demanding that Lamash, the head, this word seems to define some kind of leader of the servants, although they never define them as servants, have to ask Dr. Watson, of his palace, come to his gardens immediately, and Lamash obeyed. Yes, my king, what is it that you require of me? Do you see these bulbs of orange and leaves of brown that surround me? Of course, my king. They are unlike any that dwell in this cavern. Do you see the intricate stone that surrounds me? asked Shomat. Of course, again, there is none like them in the cavern. And Somat, Shomat suddenly became angry, cursing at his servants. Not really servants, but he'll have to do. And screaming at those in his presence. Who do you think that I am? Do you think I have never used the books to see the beauty that is outside this cavern? I have written these books myself, even while you have seen me trained by the Grand Master. And yet you act as though I should be pleased at the beauty that now surrounds me. Beauty that comes only from this cavern. This cavern of no light, no warmth, and no color. Do you think stone and darkness are all that I require? Who do you think that I am? My king, what is it that you ask of me? Bring to me, Grand Master Kenry. Together you will work, work in a writing sense, with him, and create for me real beauty, roaring water, colors beyond imagination, living creations, not stone. These are the gardens that I demand. Now go and bring them to me. And so Lamash went to Kenry, Grand Master of the Guild of Writers, and together they created an age with beauty that was beyond that which any man had seen before. And together they brought their king to the age, eight months, these are dunny months, after his request had been made. Shomat was pleased with all that he saw, broad leaves of green and yellow, flowers of every color, and roaring waters of blue and turquoise, like the most colorful stones of dunny. And he promoted Lamash, as he was already head, I'm not sure about his promotion, but the word is fairly clear, and made Kenry his most prized grandmaster in all of Dunny. Shomat spent every day on his new age, and he asked for more of them, and he asked his architects to provide structures on these ages. And while this happens, Shomat happened, Shomat's brothers continued to grow more jealous, and their anger turned to rage. They had not been invited to live in the palace of their brother, and now, though multitudes of common citizens were invited to the gardens of Shomat, never once were they allowed to visit and their hearts burned toward their king and brother. So it was that Shomat was sitting in alone in his garden age when two creatures approached him. Though they resembled men, they walked on their arms and legs and moved quickly. 
Shomat was frightened upon seeing the creatures and immediately called for his guards. The creatures ran from the guards, but Shomat ordered his guards to follow him, and the guards obeyed. It was not until the next day that they returned. They claimed they had seen a city with hundreds of these creatures living in it, conversing with one another, and organizing armies. These armies lived inside of the Garden Age of Shomat, and Shomat was very afraid. Shomat ordered the men who had seen the village to be put in prison, not sure if book or physical prison, for what they saw, and he called his most trusted advisor, Lamash, to his residence in the city. Upon hearing of the creatures and their organization, Lamash, too, was frightened. We have no choice but to burn the book, Lamash recommended. You know this age is not ours, if it is already inhabited. You know the rules of our writing and of our books and of our people. But Shomat's heart was not moved by the words of Lamash, and he grew more angry and enraged. The world was created by me, for me. If there are others who exist, they will have to be killed. It is done now. So Shomat ordered for his brothers to be brought into his palace, and he informed them of his dilemma. Shomat asked his brothers if they would kill those who lived on his garden ages, and he bribed them with talk of power and authority. And so they agreed, even though they hated their brother. And the brothers of Shomat traveled to the age and went to the creatures to destroy them. But in talking with the creatures, they became convinced that the creatures should not be killed, but instead they should be used to destroy their brother. And so they devised a plan to kill their brother, the king. While Shomat waited in his palace in the city, his brothers appeared to him. We have finished, they announced. The creatures are all dead. Shomat was pleased to hear such words from his brothers, and on the outside, he showed love to them. My brothers, I have done much wrong to you. There have been many times that I have not treated you like even those who work in my palace, and I am sorry for these actions. But today you have proven that you do not hold anger like I do. You are better than me. You have shown me favor, and so I asked you to accept what I have to offer you. Please accept this gift. And Shomat gave his brothers a linking book. Its pages were filled with descriptions of beauty and life, like Shomat's own garden age. And it will be kept here in this palace where you will live now. Filled with pleasure and forgetting their hate for Shomat, his brothers went to the age quickly, and it was there that they died, thinking that they had fooled their brother. Shomat burned the book in his own fire, forever erasing his brothers and their deceit from his mind. And Shomat ordered the Grand Master to change his garden age so that those who lived there would die. And Kenry obeyed the king even though he knew it was wrong, and his life was filled with turmoil until he died. But Shomat, though he did what was wrong, continued to live and pursue all that he wanted. The story continues, but it seems a good point to stop. I'd like to go over this a few more times with some better translators, maybe even Dr. Watson. I filled in a lot of words as best I could for now. Well, that's a pretty uh, grim ending. Um, Let's see here. Where does this lead us? It looks like this goes back to the pond under the bridge over which we ran here when we first started. And there's a room here with a book. A book back to Gira. Alright, let's go back. And I think this is a good place to stop for now. In the next video, I'm going to go and um, use this link stone over here. Because if you thought that Showmat story was long, that was just an appetizer. We are going to be reading tons of stuff in the next video because we are going to the Tokota rooftop in Dunny, where there's tons of notebooks to read. So we're going to do that next time. And until then, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves today. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that bell so you can get notified of the next episode. But until then, I will catch you on the flip side.